All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Lunch Break. My name is Michael Jones. This is episode one. The idea here is just to get together uh, once a week, maybe more, um, to just discuss any range of topics from the technical, artistic, or professional aspects of being in motion design. Um, I am the founder of a program called MoGraph Mentor, which you probably know by now since it's embedded on the uh, student's website of the MoGraph Mentor program. Um, and it's lunchtime on the East Coast. If you're, if you're on the West Coast, then this is more of like a uh, breakfast uh, break. Um, but at any rate, today I want to talk about creating artwork. We are in the MoGraph Mentor program and each of our class levels um, are in the process of creating visual imagery of some type. Um, the projects are different, the briefs that they're working from are different, but at this stage in each of their productions they're all attempting to solve the visual problem before they go into animation. What are the visuals going to be? Um, and for all of the projects that we do in MoGraph Mentor, um, we follow a pretty specific process when it comes to creating visual imagery. Um, and I've even got, I'm just going to borrow from one of the lecture PDFs that we have within the program uh, where we talk about creating imagery. And the way that we like to put it to people is, is this, that we always start with the concept, right? It's the idea that matters the most. It's the idea that is the starting point. From concept, the next thing we need to figure out is form, right? What is the shape of this going to be? What is the layout of the composition going to be? Uh, how are we going to use the space? From there, you get into sort of your finishing touches. You think about color palette, trying to use the things that we talk about in the program with color theory and then texturing if, if it's gonna go that far. But really the first two parts of that are really the key, right? Concept, what's the idea, what are we talking about? Uh, and form, how are we gonna use the space? So that's what we are working on right now uh, for each of the class levels. And it's, it's the hardest part of the process, right? Going from concept to form. Because color, you know, there's ways to find nice color palettes, texturing, those almost become technical processes in terms of just executing out the idea, which sort of becomes the easy part after a while. The hard part is that that concept form. Um, and we see we see this being the biggest struggle for a lot of individuals that come into the program is how do I get out of the concept phase into the form uh, stage of production? Um, and just this last weekend, we, we had some another round of classes and we had a lot of amazing presentations. But again, we saw this issue of form, of how to use space, sort of peek its head up as being an issue, as being something that's difficult for young designers to, to try to figure out. Um, and this was definitely my experience too, you know, focusing on... You know, what are the colors going to be or like what's what are, what's the final illustration going to look like even before I was thinking about the overall composition of the frame. Uh, so that's what that's what I want to focus on a little bit today. I asked one of our students uh, who's in class two, his name's Daniel, if I could use his last week's presentation um, as an example of of what I'm talking about in sort of this larger, larger conversation. And he was OK with it. Uh, very generous of him to um, to allow that. So I'm just going to pull up some of his work real quick, some of his frames. So let's just take a look here and talk about this for a second. So Daniel's concept is um, is, is is really cool. He's talking about productivity. He's choosing to do his design production around this idea of what ways to be productive. Um, you know, eating healthy, exercising, not giving into distraction, all these things. So he had, he had his concept, 
um, which which is good, which is strong. And then, um, you know, he did he did some sketch phasing and then right into doing these illustrations. And you're seeing here some of his illustrated works uh, and the illustrations are looking nice. There's nice detail in here. There's some nice uh, cohesiveness in terms of the style. Um, I'm really digging the way that the ice cubes are sitting in this glass. Uh, so some nice stuff here. And let's look at one of the other compositions here. This was another frame in his presentation, um, kind of about procrastination, right? About what, you know, what are these distracting elements? Um, so th these got presented and I was, I was doing the critique for this week. Um, and immediately what stuck out was that the illustrations are nice. The color palettes are, are working. Okay, there's some interesting things going on. Um, but more than anything, the biggest issue that these frames are having is just the overall composition of them, just the way that the space is being used. Everything just kind of feels like it may be, you know, the illustrations were worked up and then they just got a, kind of got plopped in to the 16 by 9 frame. Um, and this is something that we see a lot, a lot of. And this one too, of really nice detail on these illustrations, the controller's looking cool. You know, this kind of Netflix ripoff type thing. It's communicating. It's clear what it is. Uh, but everything is just, everything's relatively the same size. I'm not really sure where to look first. Uh, and I'm not really sure what the central focus of the shot is. Um, and this is something that we see, that we see quite a bit. Now, this comes back to, you know, from concept to form, right? Figuring out the way to use space. That's the first problem that needs to be solved is how am I going to use the space of this composition to, um, to effectively communicate? And the reality is, is that exists sort of on, on two levels. There's sort of two problems to solve. Let me see here. I was just, I was just kind of thinking through this earlier um, and I'm just going to open Photoshop here and draw a little bit. So, you know, we go from concept into form, but when we say form, there's really, like I said, two problems to solve. There's two issues to solve here. Number one is how do I effectively communicate the concept or represent the concept, uh, most likely through the design principle of emphasis, right? Where, where am I going to get the viewer to look? immediately. What is the emphasis of this shot? Um, and then and then the second thing is just what is an interesting way to use the space, right? How am I going to use the space um, more than just laying things out in a linear way? How can I break it up and add some variation and add some visual interest um, and even some drama to this? So the problem is almost twofold at the at the form stage, which is concept and then using the space. So any time that you go into your sketchbook, and then that's that's really what I just want to do now is, you know, if this was if this was my problem to solve, where would I start, right? What what's the first thing that I would do? Well, the first thing I would do is definitely be working within um, within that sixteen by nine space, right? So if I'm just going to come into my and a lot of times, of course, you do this on pencil and paper. I'm just on the Cintiq here for our purposes here. Um, so if I was going to approach this, the first thing I would think about is, excuse me, let me get my comments back up here. The first thing I would think about is what is an interesting way to divide up the space, right? How can I use this 16 by nine composition to number one, relay the concept, and number two, um, use the space. Now, if I just come back here, so one of the other issues with this frame too was, so we have these four bubbles, which are these different, okay, eat healthy and exercise. So we see potato chips and Red Bull and some, some healthier bubbles. And then we have this 66%, and I was asking Daniel, you know, what is this 66% doing floating in the corner? Um, and that was in reference to actually the main emphasis of this shot, which is 
66% of people lose productivity because they don't eat healthy and exercise. Um, so a after talking through that a little bit with him, we could see actually 66% was the key focus of the shot. That was the main thing that needed to be communicated, yet we have it all the way here tucked, um, tucked in this corner. So let's see. So based off, of, based off of our conversations and thinking about, okay, 66% is what we need to emphasize. And then these other illustrations almost kind of exist um, as supporting elements. So, you know, just drawing quick and fast here, what are some interesting ways that we could divide up this space to sort of emphasize what's ultimately important. And we know that 66% is important, so why don't we just do our first one, just throwing it right in the center of the composition, since I know that's the emphasis of my shot. Then maybe I can come in and try to do a little bit of variation on the way that I divide up this frame. So I'm dividing this space up into these different squares, and then maybe we could you know, add these potato chip illustrations and at this phase of a production, you know, it really is not incredibly crucial that, get our little ice cubes going here, um, that the illustrations be perfect, right? That all the detail is there. More than anything, I want to figure out, you know, what I'm doing, um, what I'm doing with this space. So I think there was like a barbell illustration and like some running shoes. And I'm just uh, kind of thinking out loud here. And then we had, uh, you know, a banana in the shot. And then maybe we could add some other things here. So that would be one way to divide up the space. Let's just keep going. What if we just split the composition almost on a third, start left to right with that key piece of information, 66%, and then divide up the remainder of the frame, almost in this kind of flag shape. Again, we have our like potato chip illustration, our Red Bull illustration, with the cubes of glass here, with the ice cubes. And then, uh, you know, he didn't have it in his, but maybe we just stick with like the unhealthy food type of thing. Got some slices of pizza. That's another way I think we could use use the space with a with an emphasis. Um, what about what about we bring that statistic back to the center and try to divide up the frame like this, and then just do a little variation. And this actually, now that I look at it, is kind of like almost the lunch break. Uh, main graphic that we had. And this is this is essentially what we're asking of students that they provide at the beginning of productions is, you know, rough sketches, thinking about emphasis, thinking about their concept, and then thinking about the different ways to use space. So we have this like barbell illustration. Got our banana, doesn't quite look like a banana. Um, let's see. Okay, so I've, I've focused on some, on some ways of dividing the space using these more rectangular forms. Uh, but let's say we wanted to give ourselves a constraint of using some more circular forms since that was kind of his original so why don't we, why don't, and I'm going to, I'm just going to keep sticking with this idea that this 66% is what I really want to be the emphasis. Uh, and because he had four bubbles, that's a little small. I can blow these up a little. And now that I see this, I think everything would need to be smaller on a final composition. But this comes back to this idea that these other illustrations are really just supporting supporting my main premise here. And if you wanted to add a little bit of typography of 66% uh, of people lose productivity uh, due to unhealthy living, and then this kind of banana shape, and then we got something else there. 
That's another way I think we could use the space with a better emphasis. Let me play devil's advocate here and just do something really, let me try to get that right. Sticking with our constraint of circular forms, you know, working left to right to keep our uh, key piece of information. Then, then what about some, man, I don't like how big I do that. You know, here's another design principle, right? Is, is contrast, variation. So maybe every circle can't be, can't be the same size. I actually don't like where I placed that. Maybe we could do something left to right um, with our supporting illustrations going in there. Maybe even a fifth. Space feels a little empty, doesn't it? Uh, more circular forms. Maybe we could combine circular forms and rectangular forms. Let me just draw a big rough circle and say this is sort of our we're keeping our elements very key to the center. And then what if we did divide up? Let's actually push it a little bit more to divide these forms up. Something like this, where then these uh, existing illustrations kind of exist on the periphery here. You know, the Red Bull reference. And then it's like really these other you know references for unhealthy living that sort of becomes the easy part and then executing these illustrations i still think the key you know the hardest thing to figure out is like how are we going to use this space how are we going to divide up this space to one tell the story but then above and beyond that um, how do we delight the audience a little bit how do we make it sort of lovely um, to look at so this is supposed to be a running shoe, a little shoelace. So there we go. There's my really fast, rough six sketches um, that, you know, if this was my assignment to do, uh, and the reality is, okay, that's six. I should probably do 10 more, right? I should probably do another, you know, 10 to 15 sketches to try to just keep searching, just keep getting ideas out of my brain um, you know, how, how am I going to use the space? What is the emphasis of the shot? So let's look at, let's look at another shot that he presented, which I alluded to a little bit earlier. This, this comes to the shot about procrastination. So, right. We're talking about productivity. Um, procrastination is a big, big part of that, right? Playing video games, watching Netflix, um, being on the iPhone, and another thing that I challenged Daniel on too here was a sort of mixing of visual metaphors within this composition. So three, you know, it's always like that thing. One is not like the other, you know, the, the video game controller, the Netflix and the iPhone, those are all devices of distraction. And then there's just a clock sort of randomly placed, um, which that, that keeps time. That doesn't necessarily waste time. Um, I understand why it's there, but there's a sort of loose association. And again, it feels like we need to take a step back. We need to go to pencil and paper in our 16 by nine comps and just start sketching out uh, different ways that we could, that we could, like I said, number one, what is the emphasis of the shot? Let's walk that, that line. What is the emphasis of the shot? Number two, what are the ways that we could use, um, use the space? And my suggestion to Daniel on this one was, you know, to, to go back and try to sketch more ways to use the space if you want to keep all these elements in or simplify it uh, and have a more key element um, in the shot, uh, whether that's just going to be the video game controller or just the, um, just the iPhone. So this is, you know, this is largely the struggle for every motion designer, every visual artist on every project that we face. Um, which is, you know, how do we get, how do we get from concept, how do we get from concept to form? Color and texture almost, you know, once you learn color theory, it becomes far less daunting to work with different colors, sort of balancing them against each other. Um, the texturing that becomes a little bit exploratory over time. You find the ways that you like to, to texture your artwork. Um, but it really comes down to 
this issue of how are the forms going to be used? How am I going to lay out the space? How am I going to lay out the composition um, in an effective way? And then sort of my examples of how we would do that are just really rough. Um, but this is quite literally how I would start almost any production where there is where there's a need to do storyboarding. I'm not just gonna sit down and do the final boards. I'm going to try to think about each of the key shots and different ways that I could that I could divide up the space, use the space in an interesting way. And even with these six, you know, rough sketches, there's bound to be a better way to use the space. And now that I've kind of laid these out and I can kind of look at them, I could potentially go back through and say like, no, this one's just kind of lame. It's sort of obvious. This one doesn't seem right. It feels kind of imbalanced. Um, I think there's something potentially interesting here. I'd say that one's a pretty decent candidate. This one feels kind of interesting too with the circular forms against the rectangles. I like that one. Uh, this one, this one I don't love quite as much. Um, so now I'm getting closer, right? I'm beginning to boil it down. I'm beginning to try to find what the composition is going to be. And then once I've decided on that, um, you know, this phase becomes easier, right? Then doing, just doing these specific illustrations becomes a little bit more of just a technical execution process versus you know, I'm in Illustrator, I've got my artwork, now I've got to decide what this composition's gonna be. That's, that's, the, that's the mistake that I made for years, was just being inside of Illustrator, saying like, oh, I have artwork, now, now let me compose, now let me think about how to use the space. Um, when in reality, just doing it on pencil and paper, on a Cintiq to just get through all the variations um, is exponentially easier. And then when you get into Illustrator, you know, just bringing those sketches in or looking at the references um, to then execute something really specific and really perfect um, is 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 the way that we that we preach it in MoGraph Mentor. We try to drill that in. We're trying to do a better job of of, of opening people's eyes to that uh, process. Um, Daniel's got some killer artwork here. I think just some reformatting of, of using some space and he's gonna have some really, really interesting uh, final frames for his, for his project. So that is the gist of today's sort of talk, what I wanted to dive into. It's relevant to what's happening in the program right now. Um, so we've been thinking, thinking a lot about it. Um, so if there's any questions whatsoever, we'll do five minutes of questions, um, if you have any, and then we will, um, we will say that's a wrap here on episode one. We're trying to keep these 20 to 30 minutes, just something, just short tidbits uh, that are hopefully helpful. Um, and if you have specific topics you'd like to see in the future, feel free to interact with us on Twitter or on the Facebook page. Um, we've got, I've got sort of a slate of things that I, that I want to talk about that I would like to make presentations to you all on. Um, so, you know, we're going to, like I said, we're going to do the technical, we're going to do the artistic, and we're going to do the professional. I would say that today's topic is definitely within the artistic, right? How do we get from, how do we create visual imagery, right? What is the foundation of creating uh, solid compositions? So let's see, anybody has anything? Let's see. On my day job, my boss won't understand that this is a very important process. He wants to see really fast output and don't want to look at sketches. Yeah, the sketches might have to be internal for you. And a lot of times, you know, I would not show a client um, my entire sort of rough draft process. Um, let's see. Let me open this back up. So I would probably never show the client this stage. I, I, I do present sketches and storyboards, but I wouldn't definitely not present the variations of each. I would just present, okay, this was the final one for this shot. For this line in the script, this was the composition that I landed on. 
But, you know, I hear you. I hear you. Some people have a fundamental misunderstanding of why visual communication exists and why it's so important to think about concept, to think about emphasis, and to think about how you use space. And yeah, if you're just in an environment where there's no value on that, then there's just then that that's a moment that you need to educate um, your boss on to to try to clear up that fundamental misunderstanding. Let's see. Do you base this off a script? Typically, it is. Typically, it's based off a script, right? Um, even if there's not specifically a voiceover in a video, there's usually some type of audio video script, right? At least. Um, there's always some copy to, to the concept, right? There's always some written something, um, which is kind of goes back to that concept, concept before form, which is another thing that we sort of drill in the program. Um, and if you talk to anybody who's in the program, they'll tell you that every project begins with these pre-production documents that we make them produce, which, which has copy, which has written. We want them to state in words and then in their presentation what they intend to communicate. Because if you're not intending to communicate something specifically, you know, why, why are you even doing it necessarily, right? Does it even need to exist is the right question to ask at that point. Um, so everything, everything always begins with what are you intending to communicate? What is the concept? What, what type of copy? What type of language uh, can we use? Let's see. Can you recommend another way to improve the visual communication skills? The way to improve visual communication skills is to, is to create visual communication, is to have concepts and go through this process, right? Just work on form. Just sketch you know, op you know, create, open your sketchbook, create a bunch of 16 by nine blank squares and draw a hundred different ways you could divide that space. That's a really good basic fundamental way to start training your mind in the different ways that you could divide up that space, that you could use that composition. Um, it, it sounds, it sounds crazy, you know, do a hundred, do 200. There are, in, there's, there's a crazy number of ways that you could divide up that 16 by nine blank canvas that us motion designers, you know, we have to stare down the barrel of it, every project. What are you gonna put in that space? You know, for each second of every piece that we produce. Um, so it's important to have a grasp on that. Uh, studying design principles is very helpful so that you can begin to avoid being really sort of straightforward and boring, you know, the design principles, I feel like really open your mind to these, these, the subtle, the subtle aspects of visual imagery that the human eye is attracted to variation, contrast, um, thing, things of that nature. So study design principles. Um, but then, but then think about this flow, concept, form, color, texture, that form stage, you know, the problem on the form stage, like I said, is, is twofold. You know, how, how do I represent the concept, but then also how do I use the space? How do I delight people? Um, it's not just enough in design to just give the information. I, I don't think, um, especially not especially not as motion designers where, you know, we're essentially making all these short films. Um, we, you know, you have to delight people. It has to be interesting to look at, or it has to be moody. It has to be something above and beyond just typing out the words in the center, which sometimes that's, sometimes that's the approach you're going to take. Um, but I think if you look at, you know, go look at what, what are your favorite pieces of motion design that you've ever seen from Giant Ant or Buck and just hit the pause button at any point in those videos and look at how they're using the space. Look at how they're emphasizing what's important about that composition while balancing, making something delightful, having a variety of shapes and colors and textures and line weights um, along with balancing, emphasizing what it is they're trying to say. And I think that's the goal, right? That's that's the hard part about the job, but also the exciting part is when you find those little moments that um, can kind of achieve both sides of it uh, that you want to achieve. 
So let's see, when do you decide if the concept is good enough to take it to the form step? Yeah, that's a tough question. That's subjective. You just use your brain, you use your gut and your intuition. You know, the, if you feel the concept is interesting. Um, and a lot of times if you're working for a client, the concepts are kind of force fed to you of like, here's what we need to say. Here's, here's what it's going to be about. Um, personal projects, maybe it's a little more up in the air and ambiguous. Um, but yeah, you just, you just trust your gut and you go with it. So let's see. Okay. We're one minute over. Thank you very much everyone for coming out for lunch break episode one. Very glad that we got this rolling uh, and just very excited to uh, hang out and just continue to do this. And, you know, I'm just going to get on here and ramble about these different concepts and hopefully you find it helpful. Uh, and there's, and there's little tidbits you can take with you. So thank you for being here. If you're interested in the MoGraph mentor program, use the contact form at MoGraphMentor.com or use the application form over on the same website, MoGraphMentor.com. We're currently in the summer semester, uh, but in the next few months, we're going to start uh, talking to applicants for the fall semester. So if you want to join us this fall, you know, this is the type of stuff that we're always talking about that we're working on. Um, and of course, we're always looking for just more excited, passionate visual artists that want to take that next step that really want that art and design school experience um, to just take their career uh, to sort of new heights, hopefully. So these will be available for rewatch. Yeah, this is all being recorded. We'll post this on the web, probably the YouTube channel and uh, tweet it out, put it on the blog, that sort of thing. Uh, everybody have a great Wednesday. Enjoy the rest of your lunch break. Uh, if you're on the West Coast, your day is just getting started and we will see you soon.